Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Center and welcome back to another resin project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make these little resin gingerbread houses. So this is a mold that my mom actually picked up for me in Spain um, when she was on her last cruise. I will link our cruise playlist down below, but she got this at the El Corte Inglés in Spain. Um, I'm not sure which port in Spain it was. I can't find this exact mold online to link it for y'all, but I will put as much information as I have in the description and I will link a few similar molds that are available um, to order online. Either way, how cute is this? They are three-dimensional resin gingerbread houses with little shingles and little shutters and they are so cute. I'm so excited. You could use them for decoration. You could, I mean, it's a silicone mold. You could bake with it is what I believe it's intended for. I mean, it is a matte finish mold. So we will have to top coat these. I am actually going to pour them with a deep pour resin with a bit of glitter so that the roofs have just a dusting of like snow on top. And then we're going to paint all of the details on the side. Now, when you're working with a mold with detail and you want those details to stand out, you can always paint the inside of the mold with mica powder or acrylic paints, really anything, and that will transfer to the resin. However, when you're working with a deep mold like this, that gets a little harder to do because it's just hard to get in the little um, spaces. So we're going to pour the resin, paint the outside of the resin, and then we will put a top coat to seal the paint on. Um, I find that this works really well. I did it with the resin gnomes I made last year and they turned out perfect. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You can use these for decorating. You can use them for a wreath. I am using mine for a uh, wreath that I'm making. The anthropology wreath that came out this year with the little gingerbread houses. Everyone is doing anthropology wreath dupe. I thought about making little gingerbread houses with my Cricut, but as soon as mom gave me this mold, I knew exactly what I was doing. So check out this video. We're going to pour the resin. And then if you want to see how I put the wreath together, I will link that video down below as well. Let's get started. Okay. So let's just jump right into this. You can see I've already got my resin mixed up. This is a thick set resin for deeper molds and it is a three to one ratio. So for every three parts of A, we did one part of B, we mixed 400 milliliters. So that's 300 A, 100 B. So we mixed it for three minutes, put it in a new cup, mixed it for another three minutes. Pop all the bubbles. And I will link below, I have a resin for beginners course that I launched last month. So if you need help with all the basics, it is 10 courses, 10 courses, 10 videos, 10 courses that walks you through everything from mixing resin to layering to colors, everything you need to know to get started. But the basics in this video are that we mixed our resin for six minutes in two different cups. So now I'm going to add some colors. So I think for these little houses, I am going to fill the molds. I'm not sure how much I need. I'm thinking I'm going to need more resin than this, but didn't want to overmix. So mix more if we need more, but essentially the roofs of the little houses are at the bottom. So I'm going to mix some glitter in and we will do glitter roofs. They'll all be glitter, but I think once they cure tomorrow, I will pop these out. And then I think I'm going to paint all the details on the bottom once they're resin. And then I will put a resin clear coat over everything to seal it in and make it look shiny. That is what my brain's thinking will work. The other option, I did that with some resin gnomes last year. I'll link that below as well. It worked great. The other option would be to go in with some mica powder and paint all these details before I pour the resin. I did a trivet like that and it works great. Like it's, it's a great option, but it's easier with flat pieces. That was a trivet or a tray. So it was a flat piece with this being three dimensional. I have a feeling I just get mica powder everywhere. So 
And of course, glitter can fall to the bottom. It doesn't always stay suspended. I usually like to use iridescent flakes or copper flakes when I want things to stay suspended. But since we only are probably going to have the bottom of the roofs or the top of the roofs, the bottom of the mold, be super visible once we're done, I'm not super worried about it. I'm just going to put the glitter in and we'll see how it works, how it shakes out. And if at the end we have just little glitter dusting on the roofs, I guess we'll pretend that's snow. Let's see if this is enough or if we need some more. I don't think we have enough of the fine glitter, but I also don't want it to be necessarily a pink resin. I just want the glitter to be in the resin. I think we need more of these. We need bigger holes for this one. take the whole top off. I don't want to dump out all the fine glitter. All right, let's try that. Yeah, that's better. Just need an even distribution here. And then we will start to pour. And we will see how far it goes. All right, so we're gonna start, I think, with this house, work our way around, depending on how much resin it takes. Cross your fingers, y'all. You wanna pour from high up in a thin stream to help Minimize bubbles. All right, let's do at least two because I do think I have enough resin for at least two. It's best even when using thick set epoxy to pour in layers so that we can pop those bubbles. For the other half, let's see what we have left for resin. Look at all those bubbles coming to the top. That is the difference in thick set and regular resin. Something like a maker epoxy, that's a one to one ratio. This is designed for that deep mold and how it's going to react. All right, so I think this is what I was afraid of. I think we did about 200 milliliters per cavity. So technically, I think we need about 200 milliliters more, 400 more to do two more houses, 600 for the whole thing. Maybe a little less, depending on how far this goes. Essentially, 400 will do two and a half houses. So I might mix up another maybe 450 and do two more houses in the middle. Not exactly sure how many I'm going to need for my wreath. Plus, these are very 3D. So I'm actually thinking once they're done, I may cut them in half and just use the front halves for the for the houses. I feel like that would work. So give me two seconds. I'm going to mix up another 450. All right. More resin. It's a miracle. Let's go ahead. this little guy up. I 
and this little guy up and hope we have enough for the third one definitely running low I don't want to mix more oh yeah that's good enough close enough for government work as they say scrape everything out make sure we've got all the excess dun, 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 dun. And pop those bubbles. Especially since I was so worried about pouring these and seeing how much resin we had, I forgot to pour them in layers. I, I mean, these are just blocks. There's not as many places with in the molds themselves for everything to get trapped so hopefully it's fine I want like 50 more milliliters I'm going to go ahead and cover this and then I'm going to leave it here to cure. Usually I would move it into my, my spare bedroom where I have my, um, what's the word? Ventilator system. Can't pour in there, but I usually bring everything in there to cure because outside the temperature will be too much. But as you can tell, like they just rest on the roofs. And until this cures a little bit, I'm afraid that moving it will spill everything because I am, your girl is clumsy. So we're going to cover this with just like a basket or something to keep leaves and dirt from falling in. And then I will move it in probably two, three hours once this is cured just enough to not spill everywhere. And then we'll come back um, tomorrow or perhaps the day after since this is thick set. Sometimes it takes a little longer to cure and unmold them. We'll paint them. We'll put them on a wreath. Well, we'll probably just unmold them in this video. The wreath itself will probably have to be a second video. Otherwise it'll get way too long, but either way, I'll be back. Ta-da. All right. So you can see, I do think most of the glitter fell to the peaks and we're missing a little here, but I mean, I think it'll be fine. Let's go ahead and unmold these. Oh man. Oh, they're pretty. Okay. Yes, the glitter was the perfect choice. So they are frosted or matte. They're not clear. Um, well, they're clear. They're not um, shiny, but that's okay because all of these little details I am going to be painting and then we'll put a clear coat on these and the clear coat is what will really shine everything up to this clear finish. Let's go ahead and mold them all. Some of them have more details than others, but they don't appear to have any bubbles or stickiness. And like this one that's a little uneven, we can just sand the bottom flat. But again, like if I'm using mine for a wreath, so I could just put this side out on the wreath and it would be fine. But if you're wanting them to stand flat, just sand the bottom down. Ooh, I bet this one's good. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that one's cute. They're so cute. I like that side. All the details, like, and once I paint all of these little details, like pink, they're going to really pop. I'm going to have to decide, like, because I... I want to paint some of this roof line, but obviously I can't paint too much of the shingles or it will cover the glitter. So we'll just see, we'll see as we go. All right, middle one. Oh yeah, look at those shingles. This is my new favorite. 
love that one. These would be so cute even in a little gingerbread village. I may have to do another set of these full, full, full to the top. I didn't want to use the resin since I knew these were going on a wreath and wouldn't matter as much, but I could easily do a full set of six of these full to the top for an actual village. That'd be so cute. All right. So now we are going to paint these and it is, it is not a long, pro not a long process. It is a long process. It is not a hard process. We are literally going to paint on the resin um, and we'll just pick, like I think for this one, maybe we'll paint the bottom all pink with some darker pink went details on the windows and maybe a little teal border around the sides. And painting on resin, this is matte resin, so it will go on easier than glossy resin, but it's gonna look worse before it looks better. You're gonna do thin layers of streaky, crappy paint until you've built it up enough to have thick layers of beautiful, glossy paint. And then at the end of that, we'll put a clear coat on everything and it will seal it all in and make it pop. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna paint one house um, in a little and show you kind of what I'm doing. And then I will probably do the rest off camera because this is gonna be a long process and I don't want y'all to have to watch every single second. Let's go ahead and get some new brushes out because I love these. I buy packs and packs of them. Kind of a funny brush person. I don't, I don't mind cleaning my brushes, but I just, as much as I clean them and I will keep reusing them, I just love a new brush. I don't know. A brush snob. All right, so for my Christmas wreath, these trees here are the colors I was able to find at Walmart, Target, and the dollar store. So this is kind of the, the color scheme I'm going with. So I picked some different paints that go with these colors. My dogs are very upset about it. So let's go ahead. I'm not, see, I'm not sure about this one, so I think I might mix a little of this darker red in that one. Maybe I'll mix a little of that pink in this darker red. I'm not sure yet. Got my sophisticated paint palette. Paint palette of champions over here. La peeper plate. this is done because seems like we will and a little metallic rose gold and we're just gonna paint kind of what what we feel in our heart we may not use all these colors but we might so let's start with this one because I think I know what I want this one to be And have to do it in sides. Otherwise, we won't have anything to hold. We might actually, because we can hold the top, we're not painting the roof. And until the paint dries or you cover it with resin, get some somewhere you don't like it you can really use a little water and a paper towel to uh, clean it off resin is very forgiving until it's sealed it's going on really well. I did some little gnomes with the same technique last year 
and it was much um, streakier and uglier when I painted it on. I'm guessing that's because this is, like I said, it's a it's a matte finish and not a gloss finish. And that was a gloss finish. The, the paint really did not want to stick to the gloss. Once it's dry, you can put on a second coat, help it be darker and more pigmented. Give me a second. Okay, so got a little Q-tip with some water. I'm just gonna clean up edges here. And you can also get a toothpick if you really need to, but I'm just gonna use a clean brush to kind of Perfect. Let's do this side. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so all of the houses are painted. Got a few different color schemes. You can see I haven't um, haven't cut anything in half because I'm not sure if I need to. And at the end of the day, I want to do the gingerbread houses first and then, like I said, we'll do the wreath in a separate video. So as far as the gingerbread houses go, they are almost done. We are going to do a top coat rained last night so my table's wet but we're just doing a top coat so I'm just it's fine it's fine just need a little bit of resin for a top coat and that's just gonna really shine up these roofs more than anything so all I'm gonna do is pour a little bit on top of each and then we'll rub it in, adding more as we need to. You don't need much. I literally made 40 milliliters, which was two pumps of resin, and that might be too much. But, you know, 
always rather have too much than not enough. But in this case, you want a very thin layer over everything and then to spread it out as opposed to a thick layer that's just going to fall down and, and drip on everything. So we'll add more as we need more. All right. Your roof, look how pretty it is with the glitter signed up. All right, so we definitely need some more. Perfect. You want to use your your fingers or a brush or a silicone something to make sure it gets in all the nooks and crannies. Everything. As long as you have gloves on, you're good, but you don't want to do this with ungloved hands. Resin is always toxic, y'all. As long as your hands are gloved, you're good, but if you're doing this with bare hands, that is not good. There we go. That's spread out pretty evenly. Put it down on our little silicone mat and move on to the next one. There we go. Sticka, sticka. This always gets me. Look how much prettier these two look than these two. Well, these three. Here we get all those nooks and crannies. We still may cut or sand these down, but I want everything that we know we see now to be shiny. This, these ones have already started to pull off the sides because I waited too little too long. Okay, it's not hurting anything. This up here and put this down here. Then goop this guy up. Not gonna need as much on these louder ones. Extra because we've already kind of thoroughly resined our gloves. Alright. Let me go ahead and put this one here. Now we're going to take these off carefully without touching our skin with the resin and throw them away immediately. So you can see we probably have half of that resin. And that's it. We don't want to heat it up too much because we don't want it to pull off the sides more. We want it to stay on the houses, but the heat gun just helps it kind of flow and level out any smear marks left by our fingers. We're going to set this aside to cure and then they'll be finished. I will show you what they look like. All right. So gingerbread houses are all done. Dun, da, da, dun. If you want to see them finished, where they're supposed to be, I will be adding them to the wreath. But look at that top coat. Just look at how that glitter sparkles once you get that clear resin on. I mean, the paint does too, but that is why we put the glitter inside. 
I just wanted to show him off, so I popped him up on my little television display. So I hope you liked this project. If you are looking for gingerbread houses, these were so cute. I cannot wait to put them on my wreath, but in the meantime, they look so cute up here, especially with my little resin gnomes. Oh. And if you want um, something that'll stay suspended, I will leave a link to this project down below, but these iridescent flakes stay suspended in a way that the glitter does not. So heads up. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.